Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to Moodle MOOC 5. This is uh, Nelly Deutsch. If you can add in the chat box where you're from and everything else. So we've got Poland, Venezuela. Let's see how many countries. And if someone can count, hello, Maria Sol. Good to see you. Daniela, if you could add the country, then it'll be easier. We've got the UK, Mexico. Thank you, Daniela. We've got Eduardo, hello, from Israel. And we've got Malta, wow, Spain, OB2000, Scotland, nice, South Africa, uh, Hawaii, wow, we sure have a lot of countries. Anybody counting? We've got Calgary. Canada, uh, Massachusetts, 16 so far. Thank you for keeping tab there. Toronto, hello, Saram. We've got Dr. Remish from uh, India, unless you're traveling there. We've got Italy, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, London, wow, Bulgaria, Trinidad. Oh, good to see you, Sean. It's been a long time. Wonderful. All right. And someone else from Venezuela, 22 countries and going. Malaysia. Did I miss any country here? Switzerland. Hello, Renee. Wow. So many countries in one place. You know, I think the United Nations doesn't have such a an attendance from so many countries. So this is truly an honor. We've got Louisiana from the United States. Yes, Rosie, enthusiasm. I love that with an A. I think that enthusiasm looks much better with an A. All right, so we're gonna get started. Keep those countries coming in as people join. Thank you for changing the color. Yeah, lots of colors you can choose from. And if you'd like more, make a request. You can also change the font, of course, um, which makes it easier on some of our eyes, depending on the uh, system we're using. All right, so this is Moodle MOOC 5. And uh, we started with the first Moodle MOOC in the world in June 2013. So it's been a year and we reached number five. Uh, if you're interested, there are, <laughs> Ramesh, it reminds me of the first one. Yes, you were there. Um, we have three of them a year. You're invited to join each one of them. They're always different because Moodle keeps getting upgraded. And of course, the presenters uh, join the same ones, but with different topics and new ones join as well. So we've got Emma from the UK there, Isle of Wight, nice. Norfolk, yeah, we've got quite of, uh, excellent. All right, so everybody's ready to learn. And um, we've got two sessions today. We've got this one on the opening, and then we have another one, uh, an hour, an hour or two, an hour later, I believe, maybe two, uh, for the layout of the Moodle. So we're going to focus more on the Moodle in the second one. All right, so Moodle MOOC 5. Are you ready? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready so uh, we can get started here. So thumbs up. All right, lots of thumbs there. I think that some uh, iPads, I don't know if you can do this on the iPad. I know they're working on it. So if you can't put your thumb up, you can write the word thumb. Okay, so I see a lot of you are using the PCs. All right, if thumb, there we go. We got some thumbs in there. All right, so these are the presenters. There are currently, there is one more that's trying to find a time, but currently there are, well, you count. How many do you see here? As uh, you focus on the not so good and clear photos, sorry about that. Thank you, Tom. Tom is 24. That's right, and we may get 25. All right, so we've got Brazil. 
we've got the United States, we've got Spain, U.S., uh, Cyprus, Denmark, Sweden, United States, Malaysia, UK, uh, Guyana, South Africa, Israel. We've got India, Italy, India. Well, he's going to be in Italy, but he's an American. We've got the United States. We've got another South Africa and Venezuela. So we've got quite a few countries there. If you were counting, that's great. And I think, Joe, are you here? All right, so uh, it's really exciting because these are very passionate and individuals who like to share. And I think that's really amazing, especially, uh, you know, we take it for granted, but the internet really allows us to make all this happen. So 2424, that's interesting. And um, so it's not something that we take for granted. So what is Moodle MOOC in general? And what is Moodle MOOC 5 specifically? If you could write in the chat box what you know about Moodle MOOC 5, anything, everything, whatever comes to mind. So what is Moodle MOOC 5? That's a good question, eh? All right, just from your perspective. And of course, every answer is correct because there's no wrong answer to anything. It's whatever our perspective is. Hello, Sam Green just joined us. It's open. All right, so we can start with the MOOC. So what does the MOOC stand for? You know, people still ask this. If I go anywhere, they say, what is a MOOC? Well, MOOC. So first of all, what does it stand for? That's right, Nevis. It's Massive Open Online Course. So it's massive, which means uh, the numbers are unlimited. It doesn't mean that they exist. And of course, it's open. And we'll have to talk about what open really means. So as far as the presenters go, they're very open uh, with uh, their knowledge. And of course, it's online. It's a so-called course. And what does that mean? So Moodle is a platform with a tracking system for use in education programs. It's fantastic. I'm glad to, uh, to read that. I was going to say, I'm glad to hear you say that. Yes, <clears throat> Moodle. Anybody know what Moodle stands for? M-O-O-D-L-E. There's a great song about Moodle on YouTube. It's a platform. Thank you, Christiana. That's right. It is a platform. Um, unlike any other platform, I must confess, and more and more countries and ministries of education around the world are uh, opting for Moodle. And not only because it's free, but because it's amazing. It offers so many features that make teaching and learning so much easier. LMS, which means that it's a learning management system. But I'm still waiting for what it stands for. So you're going to have to do a little search there. M stands for... O stands for, very, very good. Nevis, you got it. It's Moodle stands for Modular Object Oriented Dynamic Learning Environment. Okay, so object oriented, I wonder what. Uh, and it was uh, actually, it started because other people have been developing it, but it started with Martin Dogiamis. Martin who was doing his PhD. He never completed his PhD. He never had time. Uh, Dogi Amis and many, many other people who were involved in uh, its development. Currently, the latest Moodle. Anybody know what the latest Moodle is? That's right. It's 2.8, really tall. Well, it's 2.7 plus plus. Okay, there are a few, uh, not yet, with an 8. Yes, exactly. It goes, uh, thank you, Lawrence. Um, I think it's 2.7.28 or something. Uh, there is an 8 there somewhere, uh, but it's still 2.7, and it's quite different. 
How many of you are using Moodle? Just give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. If you're using Moodle in your uh, schools, informally, formally. Oh, wow, quite a few of you. And some are not, but it looks like the majority are. Okay. I'm using Moodle in a few places, actually about four different colleges with different Moodles, different versions, different... Uh, it's like being in a different world. Each Moodle looks so different from the other one. So Poonam, uh, we have Moodle in my college, the old version. How old is old? Anybody still on the 1.9 or under? Uh, or above 2.0. 2.0 is pretty dull. Um, oh, really, Joe? Oh, sorry to hear that because you you are going to love. Uh, Moodle 2.6 is wonderful. 2.7 is nice too. Lots of new features there. Um, and the idea, of course, is to make our lives easier. You can make a difference to Moodle by going into moodle.org and contributing whatever you'd like. Uh, adding your input in what you'd like. Scary. Oh, you do, Joe? Really? You're going to love it. Love it. It's going to be a huge difference. Uh, but yes, it does look different. All right. So Moodle MOOC 5 consists of two things. Okay. There's the uh, live online session. That's where we are right now. Okay. Any other way of calling this where we are right now. Where are we exactly? Well, I know where you are. Well, maybe I don't, but you can see where I am. But we, where are we? We're on a VC, okay, virtual uh, class or classroom, whatever you want to call it. Any other names for it? Oh, Emma has 2.6. I like 2.6, but 2.7 is more exciting, except for the um, the editor. If you have problems with the editor, ask your administrator to make sure that it's rich. Um, virtual, what is a virtual classroom? Was IQVC? Any other live platform, live online learning? What is your favorite word? What do you, what, when people ask you, you know, you, in your family, where are you going? I'm going. So where are you going exactly? I tell, I usually tell my husband or anybody who's in the house, sorry, I got to go. I have a session. I call it a session. Would you believe it? That's what I call it. I call it a session. I've got a session. Some people call it an online event. There's so many words for it, you know, but there's nothing that's, you know, concrete. You know, we should decide what this says, you know, like one word for it. You, we know what a loaf of bread is. We don't have different names, do we? Um, you know, we know what a face is. We don't, but why don't we know what this is? Okay. So it's an online event too. Okay. So whatever you call it, you're right. Uh, so we're going to spend time in the virtual classroom with different presenters it won't only be me. I'll be talking about Moodle and uh, micro teaching, and others are going to talk about their experiences. I should really talk about my experiences in teaching with Moodle, uh, but I'll leave this for later. All right, so some of the course highlights of this MOOC are Moodle 2.7. So we always try to be up to date in the Moodle MOOCs. So 2.7, no, it's actually 2.7.2. It's not really because, um, yeah, yeah, Jennifer, exactly. Okay, so it's 2.7.2, that's the, um, and it's quite different. We're also going to be talking about theories and practice. You'll be practicing uh, the various features. If you're a non-beginner, uh, I'll talk about this uh, in the next session today about beginners and non-beginners. But basically, you'll be getting Moodle training as teachers. You also have a chance to get Moodle training as administrators of a Moodle, a Moodle website, either your schools or your own. 
we'll be discussing active learning and you will be <laughs> an active learner. Okay, so you're going to be involved in doing things and these are called artifacts. And this is for anybody who is hesitant. Failure is not an option. All right, so everybody <laughs> will succeed and you will do and learn. I'm a great believer in uh, doing as a way to learn and presenting and what Ron Berger calls becoming leaders of your own learning. And the process is amazing. You're going to experience it by presenting what you learn and reflecting on it. And hopefully you'll like it so much you'll do the same with your students. So the idea is for you to feel uh, the process of becoming a leader of your own learning and then pass it on to your students because you're perfect as you are, of course, as learners. Um, we'll also uh, uh, not discuss, but use collaborative learning. You'll be working together and uh, we'll also uh, discuss learning and teaching in a live online class through the micro teaching. By the way, do you know what micro teaching is? Anybody ever do micro teaching? It's an old word um, that has been around for a long time, ever since um, cameras. Okay, so it has to do with, um, well, actually, Tom, it's practicing, but it's also. Uh, capturing it on video. The idea is to capture your teaching on video and learn from it. So it's practicing and documenting as you go. So where is this going to happen? Well, it's going to happen in two places. And I think you already know, but if you don't, um, maybe you can answer, where is it going to take place? Uh, hello, Priscilla, a way of educational. Uh, well, it's more of your documenting your learning so that uh, you can take something with you. With IQ and Moodle. Exactly. That's right. And you'll be reflecting on a blog or a wiki if you want to reflect on a wiki. All right. So this is what the Moodle area looks like. Okay, it's called, well, you tell me what's it called, those of you who know. Uh, it's not called integrating technology. It's called, see, every Moodle is actually a website. Okay, Moodle is a website. And this particular website is called Moodle for Teachers, exactly. Okay, it's Moodle for Teachers. And Moodle was installed on it. So this um, program, if you like, uh, makes it do what it does. And it does a lot of things, okay? But it's it looks like a website. Now notice what it has. It's got social networks. So if you click on any of these, you'll be able to share. It also has tabs like you have on any website, okay, whether it's a blog type of website or whatever. So you've got tabs here. And then you've got this, which is a slide of images and courses that you can take. And then there's information down here. Okay, so it looks like any other website. The way a Moodle looks is dependent on the theme that you decide to use. And you can also customize themes. And there are people who uh, charge a lot of money to customize a Moodle website in the way it looks. But there are enough themes that are free. So this particular theme, if you like it, is free. And it's called Essential. Okay, the name of the theme is essential. Okay, and it's completely free because I don't do anything that's not free. All right, so, so far, are there any questions? Let me know in the chat box if there's a question, 
Any questions? Very good. So, you know, it's a great, the, the chat box is a great way to bounce off as you learn. In fact, I learn better when I write stuff in the chat box. So feel free to write chat, to write chat, to chat in the chat box and write, um, you know, as things come to mind and see how that works for you. Okay, whether it helps you stay focused because you're doing a lot of listening and it's not easy to listen for such a long time. So use the chat box as a notepad. Exactly. Very good, Maria. That is an excellent way of explaining it. Yes. Uh, let's go back to slide number seven. This is a place for the Moodle courses of the MOOC. Okay. And it's housed there. That's right. Moodle makes it look the way it does. Okay, so what is this? This is the other place. Okay, so um, what place is this? And I wonder what yours look like. It's a WizIQ homepage. Does this look like yours or is mine unique? This is the course page four, and you've got the tile right here. Moodle MOOC 5, Teaching with Technology and Moodle Training Course. It should look exactly the same. Excellent. Okay, just wanted to make sure. All right, now notice what you have here and learn about the course page. You also have information here. This is home of the course landing page. And you also have other information. Notice how many emails I have. Um, Okay, so let's take a look at this. Okay, the WizIQ Moodle MOOC 5 CMS. Okay, Corch Management System, or I would call it Content Management System. Okay, so let's take a little bit, um, take a closer look at this. First of all, notice, okay, um, the title is here. It tells you it's an online course. And in the middle, you have scheduled activities, okay? And it'll say scheduled activities. A lot of reading. This is excellent for uh, foreign language, English as a foreign language learners, because there's so much to read, okay? So even if you're an English teacher and you take your students online, they'll be reading. And then notice here, you go into course schedule. Now, why am I sending you to course schedule? Any ideas? The information's on the page. Let's see if you can um, see the answer on the page. So why am I sending you to the course schedule? Now, this is really important. Remember, course schedule and click on it. Okay, I'll be saying a lot of clicks to know when the online classes will take place so that we know when the session is live. Yes, <laughs> so we can plan. See, all these answers are different, but they're all correct. I love that. Any others where class and tutorials are listed to know what to do when. See content. Okay, those are all correct. Okay, so... Let's click there so we can see the scheduled activities. Activities are both the live sessions and the content, as you mentioned. And look, there's more information. To find the weekly schedule of activity in class. Oh, very good, Susan. That's very Sarah to get my husband to take care of the kids. <laughs> Love that. Wonderful, Priscilla. You see how creative everybody is? That's why I love teaching. Because when you ask a question, you don't get one answer, you get multiple answers, and then you can learn as a teacher. I mean, where would I learn if not from my students or from the participants, as I call everybody online? Okay, so that's where learning takes place when you ask a question. Thank you. Uh, hello, Irena, and welcome. All right, so we get content. Notice this is week one. And you'll be able to get this PowerPoint presentation in week one. And I'll show you where in a minute. Okay, so we've got 
You've got this list of webinars. It's a Word document. Uh, there's also the same document, a syllabus in PDF. I don't like the way it looks in PDF. So there's a Word document, and I think it looks better. And then, of course, there's a collage of the presenters. Now, this is what it looks for October 1st today. In case you didn't know, today is October 1st. Anybody's birthday? Anyone's birthday today? Birthday, anyone? No birthdays. All right, so uh, maybe tomorrow. Today is October 1st in India. Yes, it is. Uh, my niece was born at six. Oh, so there is somebody who was born today that you know. Okay, so notice October 1st. You see these? These are the icons for this virtual class. And the virtual class for October 1st, there are two of them. One is this one, the opening ceremony. The other one is the layout of Moodle for teachers, where I'll be taking you through the Moodle. Notice October 3rd, we have a live session, okay, called Using Digital Marking and Peer Feedback for Student Motivation. And this is going to be amazing. We'll be going to Denmark for this uh, presentation. Okay, so Denmark. Uh, the PowerPoint presentation is not here yet, but it will get here in a couple of hours. And then, of course, there's Maria. Maria, are you here on October 4th? Maria, if you could just raise your hand. Not your head. Uh, put a thumbs up, clap your hands or something. There is Maria. Maria is going to present. Well, you tell me, what's Maria's presentation on? A very, very important topic, as all these are. Okay, these are uh, presentations that will enrich us and help us. Uh, calendar to my email address. Woo! Calendar. I can share the calendar with you, and we're going to do that engineering Tututions? Tututions. Uh, very, very soon. Okay, we'll get to that soon. So we've got webinars in these uh, course schedules and content, as you so rightly said. The topic, of course, is badges, game, reward, professional, digital credentials. This is very important since you'll be getting these uh, on the Moodle, every week you'll qualify, if you qualify, for a badge. And of course, there are certificates. Hello, Vera, and welcome. October 5th, we have the role of social networking for disabled people and social presence. This is really important. And then, um, of course, here is the PowerPoint presentation. So we've got live classes and the PowerPoint. It's right there. It's well organized. You want them, you'll get them, Maria. I will make sure that you do because I made them a lot easier. It's, it'll be easier to get a badge of the week this time. Much easier. Okay, so every everyone is different. So you'll get a chance to get MM5. All right, so when? Well, there's a calendar. Mr. Engineering, was it? Here is the calendar. Now, this is really important. So, uh, okay, so let's take a look at where you can get a calendar. And I'm going to share a calendar with you, if I can find it. Okay, so uh, let's get the calendar. Here's the calendar. Let me uh, share it with you. You can add yourself. I don't have to add you because this calendar is completely public. If it's public, you can add yourself. So there it is. It's kind of longish, but that's the link to the calendar. If you click on it, oh, you know what? Why don't you click on it and tell me it doesn't work? It doesn't work. You're right, it doesn't work. I gave you an invalid code. Shame on me. 
Uh, let's see what went wrong here. Uh, let's get, I don't know why, but let's, um, let's see if we can get a better calendar uh, by going into, I wonder why. Funny, it works for me. Okay, so we'll get the calendar later on and I'll post it in, well, you tell me, where would you like me to post this? Where would you like this to be? Okay, if you could add that, where would you like it to be? And I'll put it wherever you'd like it to be. Okay, where email? No, <laughs> no, on WizIQ, exactly. But where on WizIQ, Christina? You'll be able to get it, Christina, and add yourself to the calendar because it's on Moodle, and I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so no worries. All right, so let's take a look at where you can get the calendar. All right, there's the calendar, and you can get this very easily. I'll share the link in the course feed on WizIQ, and you can also get it on Moodle. All right, so let's take a look at Moodle and see where you can get the calendar. First of all, you need to sign up. Can somebody add the link to the uh, Moodle for Teachers? Um, oh, it, it was supposed to be, Eunice, it was supposed to be in the... Uh, Thank you, Kyle. It was supposed to be in the uh, course schedule area. Uh, it was supposed to be embedded there, but for some reason uh, there was a problem with it. So WizIQ are working on to resolve it. So until they do, I'll share it with you as a link and then you'll be able to uh, get it. Hello, Stefan. All right, so first you need to create an account as Kyle has added the link. There's a link. If you click on it, you'll be able to get it. By the way, you can also copy chat at the end and take this with you. Anybody have the link to the uh, content for today, for this session, the content link, the PowerPoint presentation link? Anybody have it handy? Uh, Rosie, yes, you can, of course. If you have an account on Moodle for Teachers, whoa, what is that? Um, no, that's the live class. That looks like, I think it's a live class. It doesn't look like a tutorial. Uh, there it is. Nevis has added it. Let me check if yours is a tutorial courseware. No, it's a course. Uh, but there it is. Nevis has uh, added it is not available at Google. Yeah, I gave you the wrong, uh, the link doesn't, didn't work, but I'll get it for you. They are very good engineering. You got it too. That's right. Okay, that's the tutorial for today. And this is being recorded, Marsha. And you'll be able to get the beginning. Right now we're talking about enrolling in Moodle. And this is really important before the next session today. So what you have to do, number one, very urgently, is create an account or uh, enroll. And I'll show you where to enroll. So when you go into the uh, Moodle website, you will see before you even log in, you'll see course categories and then click on it and you'll be able to get these. The first one is um, very important because this is where you will be able to get your certificate. So if you reflect on five of the sessions or the recordings of the sessions, at the end of that, Moodle will track you and give you a certificate. So this is where you do it. And then there's Moodle for beginners. How many of you are beginners uh, to Moodle? If you've used Moodle 1.9 or an older version of Moodle, you might want to join the Moodle for beginners. Okay, even if you've used Moodle before, 
because Moodle 2.7 is very different from Moodle 2.0, 2 2.3, 2.0. Actually, it starts changing with Moodle 2.6. That's where the change begins with the editor, which is a big deal on Moodle. Okay, so it's really important. Lots of beginners. Great. <laughs> okay, Tom likes beginners. By the way, I forgot to introduce Tom. Uh, I'll do that in, uh, when we talk about Moodle. Tom will be moderating uh, the Moodle along with me. Thank you, Tom, for that thumbs up. All right, so editing rights. Editing rights are super important. How many of you know what an editing right is? What is an editing right? What is this? Editing rights? What? Are we going to publish a book or a magazine or a journal? What in the world are editing rights? Rights to edit? What does it mean? Permission to alter or change a piece. Very good, Marty. That is excellent. Let's see some others. Uh, can create a course. I don't know if create a course, uh, okay, but yes, create something or other. Edit other people's work. Uh, no plagiarism, thank you. Uh, allows you to edit Moodle items within Moodle. Excellent, Marsha. Well said. Alter content. See, it's really great to be able to uh, share what you think because it really opens up and it allows you to think about these terms. Because as teachers, by the way, any he anyone here not a teacher? Thumbs up if you're a teacher and thumbs down if you're not. A teacher is anyone who likes to share information. Emma, aren't you a teacher? I see some people with a thumbs down. Um, it's anyone, but you might not be a formal teacher, but you share information, teacher training. So maybe someone wants to change your mind. If you put your thumbs down, why are you not a teacher? I think today just about anybody, everybody's a teacher. Well, not only today, but even, you know, when we were kids, we always, kids, kids are great teachers. They're always teaching someone something that they learned. So technically everybody's a teacher. So we need editing rights. Okay, thank you. We need editing rights in order to alter. That was a very nice um, corporate training. Yeah, but you still do some training, right, Peter? So you're involved in sharing information, uh, helping others with information. It's still training, some kind of training, teacher training, training. Uh, so actually, we're a professional teacher. Thank you, engineering. Uh, edument. Yes. That's also a teacher. I mean, like, who's not a teacher? Even an actor is a kind of teacher, right? They teach us stuff. So editing rights is really important on Moodle because if you don't have it, you can't do anything. Well, you can. Actually, on Moodle, you can give everybody editing rights, including your students. Okay, so whether you're actively involved or not, you can get editing rights and then you can edit. Okay, so there are two courses that you don't need to enroll in uh, because they are enrolled through MetaCourse. That means that I enrolled you from two courses. So notice you need to enroll either in Moodle for Beginners or in Moodle for Non-Beginners. Where is that? Did I leave that out? I did or Moodle for non-beginners, and you don't need to enroll in these. The TPA is um, teacher practice area. The M4M is manager, is uh, Moodle for managers. This is where you log in if you already created an account. If you haven't, clicked, click on create account. And you have to do this before the next session. So make sure that you create an account, very important. Of course, it's all free, so you don't have to worry about, you know, it, Somebody's going to charge you for anything. It's not. Okay. Moodle is free. And these um, training sessions are completely free. And of course, MOOCs are free. All right. And notice this part. This part is 
difficult for many uh, participants, users, as they're called on Moodle. Notice what you have here, username, that's not a problem, but you have to make sure that all the letters are together. So no spaces in your username, okay? So if your username is uh, Buckamishu, okay, that's your username, Buckamishu, it has to be without any spaces. Okay, so username, no spaces. And you need a username. There's the asterisk in red. What is website? That's the Moodle website. Uh, and then the password, notice the password, has to have a number, okay, some kind of number. Aliphone, what's an alphanumeric, alphanumeric character? Alpha numeric. My students go nuts with this. Alphanumeric, alphanumeric character. Um, you need to have upper case and lower case, and you need to have altogether eight characters. Oh, the option to create an account there, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Added it. It's MoodleForTeachers.org. Moodle for Teachers. Dot org. Okay, that's the site. You need to put an HTTP at the beginning, of course. Okay, and then it's uh, Moodle for Teachers. Dot org. Okay. <laughs> Call me Nelly. Okay, that's fine. All right, so uh, you opened. Great. Okay, so if you have an account and you've used Facebook in the past, uh, you may have problems. Email me if you do, because we stopped that. Uh, the option to create an account is, let me go back here. There it is. Okay, so when you go there and you don't have an account, just go to the right of the page. It'll say create a new account. And then you get this at the top. And then you get this. Lots of work, people. This is a lot of work. Okay, so get ready. Get your sleeves rolled up and get ready to work. Okay, this is not the end. Notice the asterisk. It's in red. You need to have your email. Make sure that it's the correct email or then I'll have to do lots of work to find you. So make sure because it's going to be confirmed. Make sure that it's the right email. No playing around the right email. An email that is... Uh, active. And then your email again. First name, last name, city or town. You can make it up, but country, you have no choice. Okay, I like to play around, so country, no choice. And then there's a recaptcha. We like to keep spam and all kinds of undesirable people away. Uh, so uh, this is important. You enter if you don't, if you have problems with it. You can also get the audio. Any questions so far? Any, oh, that's my son's dog is crying, poor thing. Any questions? All right, so we're good. Okay, so let's continue here. Notice what I wanna show you. You'll also have to add profile details. Now this is important because we want to know who you are. People want to collaborate. They want to know what you do and so on. So this is really important. Moodle is a community. It can be. And I think that if you experience this, you'll benefit. You'll get something out of it. It's something different. So add your job description. Notice you have to open this. This is what's new to Moodle 2.6 and 2.7. They both have this um, option. Okay, so uh, let me get a color here. Okay, so uh, there's the option. You need to open it up. Okay, so let's go to the next one and see what... When you open it up, you have three rows in there. Now it's a rich editor. Okay, but this doesn't come with Moodle 2.7. Moodle 2.7 does not have a rich editor. It has something else that I don't like. Okay, so if you have Moodle 2.7, ask your administrator to make sure that it's rich with lots of features. Okay, notice how many features you have here. Okay, I don't see Poodle. There should be another row here with Poodle. Okay, 
let's go on to the next one. So you add a short bio, but it's not over yet. Look at this. You also need to add your birthday. And yes, Tom, it's working. <laughs> there was a time when the birth date would be one day <laughs> behind. So everybody was like one day younger, or is it older? Yep, one day younger. And they didn't like that. So now it works. Um, you, did, <laughs> you were 13 years old. Tom. <laughs> Really? Okay, so you can uh, add your birth date. Here's a calendar. Oh, Poodle Priscilla, you'll get a chance to learn about Poodle. Poodle uh, was created by Justin Hunt, an English teacher who now works full time uh, developing Moodle stuff. And he created a, uh, well, a lot of things, but basically it's a microphone so you can respond through audio and video straight from the uh, editor so it's really it's a it's amazing it's absolutely amazing i just love it and jason is an amazing person all this of course is completely free now when you uh, create an account you need to link read the site policy and you need to tick this off or you cannot create an account uh, the policy you can read it is basically about um behaving yourself and I'm sure you will behave yourself finally don't forget to create after you worked so hard click on create my account and then you go to your email and you should get an email now if you don't get an email what do you do what do you do if you don't get an email confirming you need to confirm your account you look to spam Really? Moodle doesn't go to spam, does it? You don't have to wait. If it doesn't come right away, it's not going to come. <laughs> okay. Oh, it can? Really? All right. If it doesn't come and you're worried and you have like an hour, just email me. Okay. Email me uh, at Nelly Deutsch at gmail.com uh, and I'll see what's going on. Okay, so email me. There's my email. Okay, it's very easy to remember. You just have to remember that Nelly's with an IE and Deutsch is like German. Okay, so take a look at your spam folder too. All right, so this is it. This is, uh, I found this uh, on Wiki. I was looking for images that are CC. Creative Commons that I can use and reuse and so on because those are the only images that I use. Otherwise, you know, they're copyrighted. So this is what I found. And it turned out this was an old version of uh, one of my websites, one of my Moodle websites. It was really exciting to see this on Wiko, Wiki uh, Educator. All right, so this is how it's done. You create an account, and once you create an account, you will go to your email. I probably created this myself. And then you'll get this longish thing. It'll say moodleforteachers.org, not .com. And then you'll have to click on it to confirm. Oh, you have! Well, you had one before, didn't you, Maria? You don't have to create a new one. Okay, so you need to click on it and then you're all set. And here's the calendar that I told you about. This calendar appears on all the course pages, on every single page. And Moodle has many, many pages. Every link that you click on, every link that you click on is a new page. And it has a, an address. It has a URL address that you can see. Where can you see it? In your browser window. Now this information is very, very important. So let me do this slowly. All right. Every link, and there are lots of links, every blue thing is a link, um, goes to a new page. It has an address that you can see in the browser window. You go to the browser window, you copy, and that's your way of sharing where you are. Now, calendars are important for one more thing that nobody mentioned. 
and that's notifications. You can get notified uh, on your cell phone, your smartphone, email, different ways. You can have bells ringing like an alarm clock, okay, for each of these sessions. So you can be notified every time there is a class. You can make it 10 minutes before the class starts. You can make it 20 minutes. I sometimes, if I have to write something and I need, I do it two days before. So if you need reminders, you can get these reminders in your Google Calendar or any other calendar, Outlook, any other calendar that you use. But you can also get it on the WizIQ course area. Okay, and that's this little thing at the top right under your email box. You saw this before. Okay, I showed it to you before, but let me go back in case you forgot what it looks like. There it is. I showed it to you before. Okay, this is it. You see this um, wheel here? Okay, if you open it up, open up the flap, you will get, uh, let's go back here. Open up the flap, you will get uh, a chance to allow notifications. Okay, so I think I missed that. Okay, so that's for notifications. Sorry for having to do this. Notifications. Okay, open it up, and what you get are, whoops, I didn't show you what you get. Well, why don't you go there now and tell me what you get? What's in there? I can't show you because uh, you won't see that unless you're a learner. If you're a teacher and this is your course, you cannot see anything. Very good, Sarah M. That's right. You get course. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Don't leave. Okay. Just set your notifications. If you don't want to get email notifications, then don't. Tom, we've got eight minutes. Okay. And that's it. Are there any questions? Questions, questions, anyone? Well, if there aren't any questions, let me take you to the webinars. Okay, I wanna share the webinars and some of the sessions that we'll be having. I mentioned this at the beginning, but I didn't take you through them. So today, what we have is after the opening ceremony, uh, the layout of the Moodle, and that's at 1 p.m. EST. What time is 1 p.m. EST for you? Right now it's 11.52 on mine, so it's in about one hour. Oh, so you're EST as well. So what time is it? So what time is 1 o'clock in your area? 8 o'clock. Same as mine. Okay, so we all have different time zones, so we have different times. So it's really important to set the time in your WizIQ account and in the Moodle. Super important to set your time zone. Okay, so make sure you do that so you don't get confused. And then we have, to, uh, not tomorrow, but Friday, we have Andreas Molinder, who's going to be talking about digital marketing. Here's information about that. And all this information is in the course schedule. And then, of course, Maria, who's here on badges, issuing and gaining badges. And you'll learn about Mozilla Backpack and Open Badges. And then we have, as I mentioned, Think Possible Social Inclusion for Disabled People. Okay, there is lots of information about that. And then we have Martha Gold, who's going to talk about books and lessons on Moodle. So you'll get firsthand information. Um, Martha is a Moodle trainer, and she'll be talking about books and lessons. Okay, so this is about that, and that information's there. And then we have Jackie from South Africa, who's going to be... Jackie is a computer programmer. And she thinks that every teacher should teach this. In other words, she's going to tell us about her program, her initiative to get everyone learning to program. Isn't that amazing? Yes, that's Jackie. I met Jackie 
uh, finally, I met her in uh, Tampere, Finland. We've been friends. Oh, actually, I met her in uh, Victoria. We've we've <laughs> we've met quite often at conferences. So Jackie is actually a person that I had met first face to face. You're right, Tom, and then online. Tom Tom knows. I extended. Okay, so that's Jackie, Design Principles for Teaching Computer Programming. And I'm really excited about that. And then there's Stefan, who's here from Brazil, who's going to talk about professional development. He's a teacher trainer as well. We'll get to digital storytelling by the one and only Aaron Sherman, who created the digital storytelling. And and Rebecca is a teacher who uses digital storytelling, so teaching through stories. This is an amazing program, so I don't know if you're familiar with it, but you'll learn all about it. And then there's Nelly, of course, who'll be talking about the Moodle things. And then we've got digital literacy in higher education, CLIL. How many of you have heard of CLIL? If you could add that in the chat box, CLIL. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? CLIL stands for Content and Language Integrated Learning. It's combining language learning with other subjects. An amazing uh, idea. And then uh, we've got Ebba from Sweden on online learning and analytics, analyzing learners and what they learn. We've got, now this is amazing. Ah, this is so amazing. It's a way remote proctoring on Moodle. In other words, getting your students to be tested on the Moodle and you can see their faces right there. I mean, it's an amazing program. You'll get a chance to see what it's like. So it's testing students and actually capturing their faces, not just their IPs. And then Don Alderson from the UK who's done amazing research on MOOCs and teaching with Moodle. She'll be discussing that. She's also written a book on playing, uh, children playing, which is also amazing. We've got Ludmilla with Pedagogy of Engagement. Uh, Ludmilla is also a teacher trainer in the United States. And then uh, Managing Time with Paul. Now, Paul Boudouin is also a composer. Look him up on uh, Wikipedia. I couldn't believe it. I met Paul um, in Tampere, also in Finland. He's so modest, but he has presence on Wikipedia. So look it up, Paul Baudin. He's a composer, really a well-renowned person, an amazing person. And then we've got Brenda, who will be talking about action research and academic staff in the case of Open University in Tanzania. And then we've got Doris, who'll be talking about, Doris has been using Moodle for years, uh, at least 10 years, and she'll be talking about language teaching for peace. Uh, she's from Venezuela. And then we've got Nitin, who is a Moodle developer. He has an MA uh, in programming and he'll be talking about e-commerce and Moodle. Nitin is also my right hand with a Moodle. He helps me out. Shelly Terrell is going to talk about virtual potential designing creative collaborative. Remember it's collaborative active e-learning spaces. And then uh, Zaid from Malaysia is going to be talking about speed reading. <laughs> He's the juggler. He loves to juggle. He's an amazing teacher training at a university in um, Malaysia. And then we've got Len from Ghana. He uses Facebook as well as Moodle. And he'll be talking about that. And then we have Eduardo, who's here with us. And Eduardo has been using Moodle. He started with Moodle for teachers. And look where this got him. And I'm really amazed at what Eduardo has been doing developing and facilitating teacher professional development. He is an example of someone who wants to share because he cares. And that's it. So that's the program of the MOOC. 31, is it 31? 31 days of learning. And you'll get a certificate for your work. So um, 
that's it. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you in one hour and a minute. This is uh, being recorded through Camtasia. It'll appear in the course schedule content area uh, under Moodle, under uh, Vimeo, and YouTube video, because not everybody gets YouTube. So thank you, everyone. See you in an hour. Bye for now.